This is, well, imagine the biggest wind turbines you've ever seen. Like seriously massive. Blades longer than a football field, towers reaching higher than Statue of Liberty. Now picture them not on land, not even bolted to the shallow seabed near the coast, but floating. Yeah, floating. Bobbing around, way out in the deep, wild oceans, miles from anywhere. Sounds kinda crazy, right? Like something straight out of science fiction movie. Maybe a little bit unbelievable. But what if I told you this isn't just some futuristic dream? What if I told you it's already happening right now and it might just be one of the most incredible secret weapons we have in the race for clean energy? Hello everyone, welcome to Physics Space and I'm your host Devang Shu, but you can call me Dave. Today we're talking about floating offshore wind turbines and folks, it's a potential game changer. Stick around because we need to unpack how these giants stay afloat and why they could be so crucial for our energy future. Okay, let's get real for a second. We all know we need more clean energy, like way more. And we need it like yesterday. Climate change isn't waiting around and wind power has been a hero, no doubt. Also those wind turbines on hillsides, they're doing great work, but we're kind of running out of best spots on the land. Plus, not everyone loves the view. So the logical step was to head offshore, planting turbines in the shallow coastal waters. Brilliant, isn't it? We've been doing that, sticking those huge towers right into the seabed. It works great if the water isn't too deep. But guess what? A huge chunk of the world's coastlines, especially right here in the US, think California, Oregon, even parts of Maine, get deep really fast. Hundreds, even thousands of feet deep, not far from shore. You can't just hammer a pole that long into the ocean floor. So here's the big question. How do you possibly tap into all this incredible powerful wind blowing further out at the sea over those deep waters? where the wind is often stronger and more consistent. You can't build a foundation tall enough. The answer, you gotta think differently. You make him float. Floating, a wind turbine taller than a skyscraper floating. How does that even stay upright? It sounds wild, but the engineering is pretty darn clever. Think of it like an iceberg. The real magic, the massive structures providing stability is hidden beneath the waves. Or maybe like those huge offshore oil platforms. We are basically talking similar ideas, but reaching up for the wind. There are a few ways engineers are making this happen. Let's quickly cover the big three floating platform types. First, the spar way. Imagine a giant fishing bobber, super tall and thin, stretching deep underwater. It's heavily weighted way down low, which keeps the whole thing incredibly stable, even in rough seas. Equinor's high wind projects pioneered this. Then there is the semi-submersible. This is probably the most common design being tested. Picture a big floating structure, often triangular with large buoyant columns. It sits low in the water, mostly submerged. Hence the name. It's like a giant high-tech craft designed to barely notice the waves, offering great stability. Principal Power's wind flow design is a major example. And the third main type is the Tension Lake Platform or TLP. This one's different. It's a buoyant platform held down tight by strong steel cables or tendons anchored to the seabed. These tendons are kept constantly taut, pulling down against the platform's urge to float higher. This makes it super stable, but installing those tendons precisely in deep water is complex. Now, whichever platform you use, we are talking about supporting absolute monsters. Modern offshore wind turbines can reach heights of over 850 feet. The blades sweep an area larger than two football fields and the floating platforms themselves, thousands of tons the size of smaller buildings. Okay, but how do they keep these massive things from just floating away? Here, they use heavy duty mooring systems. Think colossal anchors dug into the seabed, connected by super strong chains or synthetic ropes. These lines hold the platforms firmly at the place, while still allowing some movement and the electricity through thick armored subsea cables running along the seafloor, sometimes for even 50 miles or more connecting the floating wind farm back to the onshore power grid. It's a massive undertaking, combining naval architecture, advanced material and cutting edge wind technology. Pretty wild. This isn't just a theory, this tech is out there facing the real ocean right now. Over in Europe, floating projects are already powering homes. Take High Wind Scotland by Equinor. It kicked off in 2017 as the world's first farm of floating turbines. Five big sparbways of the Scottish coast, proving the concept works at scale in rough seas, a huge moment. Then there is Wind Float Atlantic of Portugal, using those semi-submersible platforms from principal power. Three massive turbines assembled in port and towed out. Another major step showing different designs are viable. These aren't just experiments anymore. Europe is still leading with big plans for more floating projects and China is investing heavily in all kinds of offshore wind. 
including floating tech. But let's bring it home. What about the US? This is where floating wind gets really exciting. Maybe even essential because much of our best offshore wind is in deep water. Think California and Oregon. The wind out there are incredible but the Pacific drops off fast. Floating is basically the only way to go big there. The federal government BOEM has already held auctions leasing out huge areas of California, especially for floating wind. Oregon is planning similar steps. The race is on. And it's not just the Pacific. Look at Maine on the east coast. They also have deep waters. They're setting up a dedicated floating offshore wind research array to test out about a dozen turbines and figure out the tech in local conditions. Now, let's keep it real. It hasn't all been a smooth sailing ride. We have seen bumps on the road recently. Some big planned projects faced delays or cancellations, costs shoot up, supply chain got tangled, real world challenges. It's like any new technology, there are growing pains. But the potential is so enormous and the need so urgent that companies and governments are pushing hard to overcome these hurdles. You have got major players involved. Equinor, Principal Power, Shell and others are actively developing projects or the technology. It's a dynamic space. Ok, this is a cool tech, but why should you care? What's the big deal? Well, remember that secret weapon idea? This unlocks a colossal amount of clean energy, accessing winds previously untouchable. Globally, the potential is staggering. Floating wind could technically meet the world's electricity demand many times over. Realistically, tapping over a fraction could power tens of millions of homes cleanly. And better winds mean better power. Winds further offshore are stronger and more consistent. These turbines generate electricity more reliably, often matching the capacity factor of traditional power plants but without emissions. That makes grid integrations smoother. Plus the visual aspect. Being miles offshore means you likely won't see them from the beach, helping with public acceptance. And the economy and jobs? Building these floating behemoths means high skill jobs in manufacturing at ports which need upgrades on specialized ships and for maintenance. It's a whole new American industry, potentially creating tens of thousands of jobs leveraging skills from offshore oil and gas. Oh, and the future of fuel bonus. All that clean energy could produce green hydrogens right offshore via electrolysis. Green hydrogen could power ships, decarbonize heavy industries, maybe even planes someday. Floating wind farms could become massive offshore energy hubs. Alright, I know you found this idea amazing. Then why isn't the ocean covered with floating wind turbines yet? There are significant hurdles. First, the price tag. Right now, floating is more expensive than fixed bottom offshore or onshore wind. Those complex platforms, mooring systems, deep water installations, it adds up. Costs are falling fast as the tech matures and scales up, potentially becoming competitive soon, but the initial investment is still huge. Then technical challenges. The technology is still evolving, we need more standardizations, think interchangeable parts, to cut costs and speed things up. Installing and maintaining these massive structures miles out at the sea, often in harsh weathers, requires specialized vehicles and crew. It is tough. You also need massive coastal ports for assembly. With deep waters and strong docks, building or upgrading this is a major infrastructure task, especially in the US. Getting the power back to shore requires laying long, expensive subsea cables and often upgrading the onshore grid systems significantly. With that in mind, you know, we must also share the ocean responsibly ensuring minimal impact on marine ecosystems, fishing and shipping through careful planning and monitoring. And finally, economic headwinds like inflation and supply chain issues can impact project viability, especially for a newer technology. Strong policy support is crucial. So, floating wind turbines, not science fiction, but a real powerful and rapidly growing technology facing real challenges. But the promise is immense. It's about unlocking vast previously unreachable clean energy resources creating a new wave of American jobs and giving us a powerful new tool to fight climate change. For places like the US West Coast, it's potentially the key to large-scale offshore wind. The fundamental technology works. The potential is undeniable. The momentum is building. The big question now is, can we navigate the costs, streamline developments, build the supply chains and scale this technology up fast enough? Can we truly learn to harness the incredible power of the deep sea ocean winds? It's going to take innovations, investments, smart policies and a lot of hard work. But if we get it right, floating offshore winds could truly be one of the most defining clean energy technologies of the coming decade. This is definitely one story, one technology. You will want to keep your eyes on my channel for more stories like this. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.